Curious Fish by Elsa Besco. The Curious Fish. Once upon a time, there was a little perch called Flash. He loved to swim around in the clear water of the lake and was curious about everything he saw. Whenever a big fish came along who might want to gobble him up, quick as a flash, off he would swim and the big fish would be left gaping. Flash had no mother or father and little fish don't have parents. This big fish cannot remember which of the many little fish belonged to them, but Flash had many uncles and aunts instead. There was dear Aunt Flounder with her red spots, splendid, silvery Uncle Bream, and long, strong Uncle Pike with his sharp teeth. They were much bigger than Flash, but they never thought of eating him. He was much too charming for that. One day they warned him, it's dangerous to be so curious, you know. You might get pulled up onto that terrible dry land where no one can swim and where giant frogs run around on two legs. They're called people. Oh, I'd love to see that, said Flash. For heaven's sake, you must not, silly boy, Aunt Flounder said as she twirled her tail in a circle. Fish do that instead of touching wood if they don't want something bad to happen. Uncle Pike muttered, come here immediately, my boy, and don't be so naughty, but quick as a flash, off Flash swam. As Flash swam by, old Pincer the crab crept out from under his rock. Have you ever been up to that dry land? asked Flash. Of course I have, replied the crab. That's where I lost my right pincer. But it's grown back again and is nearly as good as new. It looks a bit small, said Flash. It's big enough to catch you, cried the crab as he made a dash for Flash. But quick as a flash, off Flash swam. He was so quick that he almost bumped into a wooden post. Flash had never been to this side of the bay before, so he took a careful look around. There was another post nearby and above them some kind of roof. As Flash swam around, he noticed something long and thin dangling in the water at the end of a tasty, uh, at the end, a tasty worm was wriggling and Flash just had to try it. All of a sudden, Flash was stuck. He couldn't get away and he was being pulled up. On the pier above sat Tom. He was delighted because it was the first time he had ever caught a fish. He threw down his rod and grabbed the fish with both hands and he was afraid it might jump back into the water, but poor little Flash could do no such thing as he was firmly caught on the hook. Tom looked at Flash, and Flash thought, well, if I'm going to die now, I should at least get a better look at the giant, at this giant frog. And so he stared at Tom with his big round eyes. Flash was getting quite breathless with no water in his gills, and Tom felt sorry for him. Don't worry, little perch, he said. I won't cook you and eat you. I'm going to put you in an aquarium where you'll have a lovely time. Then he very carefully unhooked Flash, and it hardly hurt at all. There's a frog. Okay. Tom looked around for a container, but he hadn't brought anything along. He pulled off his boot filled it with water and put Flash inside. Poor Flash. It was rather different from swimming in the clear, fresh water of the lake. With his boot in one hand and his fishing rod in the other, Tom trudged home. As he walked, water trickled out of his boot and he had to keep stopping to fill it up. Back at the house, Tom's mother was getting worried, <clears throat> so she sent his sister, Lot Lottie, to look for him. At last she found him. What have you done with your boot? Are you mad? But when Tom showed her the little fish, she helped him to fill his boot with water. They took Flash home and put him in a glass jar. Flash was not amused. The 
down in the lake a little newt who had seen Flash being caught told Aunt Flounder. She cried so hard that her tears rose to the surface like bubbles. Uncle Pike and Uncle Green was, were horrified when they heard the news. Together they swam over to the pier. The frog was sitting among the reeds watching the sunset. When he heard Aunt Flounder crying, he called out, come here and listen to my story. He told them that Flash had not died, but had been carried home by one of these giant frogs called Tom. I'd like to bite him in two, snarled Uncle Pike. That wouldn't be right, said the frog, and like others of his kind, Tom never hurts us creatures from the lake. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, cried Aunt Flounder. How can we possibly rescue our friend? Now stop crying, croaked the frog. That won't get you anywhere. I know a wise old frog who might be able to help. She can do magic. She is the aunt of my great grandmother and she is so old that moss and weeds grow all over her. She lives deep in the narrow creek, but she often swims around at nighttime. She might be able to cast a spell so that you can go up to the land and breathe air through your gills. But it depends how she's feeling. She's very grumpy. The fish swarm quickly to the narrow creek where the water was horribly warm and muddy. They waited patiently for the wise old frog. When the full moon rose, out she swam. She was much bigger than the other frogs, old and wrinkled. But she looked so wise that Aunt Flounder bowed down flat in the mud before her. At first, when the fish told her their story, she did not make a sound. But then she snorted and said in a deep croak, I have heard many silly wishes in my lifetime, but I have never heard of fish wanting to walk on dry land. That is the silliest thing I have ever heard. And because it is so silly, I will punish you by granting it. Come close, come closer while I cast my spell. The wise old frog stood on her hind legs, lifted her knobbly forearms and mumbled something that sounded like splish gurgle bubbly splash gurgle welch. And then she blew lots of bubbles at them. Now go, she said. And as soon as the red sun starts to rise, Go up to the land and the spell will work. It will only last a short time, so you must hurry. Now I'll be off with you. Let me swim in peace. The fish bowed down, bowed low, and thanked her by waving their fins. Then off they swam towards the pier. The frog was waiting to show them the way to Tom's house. He couldn't stop laughing as they wobbled past on spindly legs. Tom was still sound asleep when his bedroom door burst open. He sat bolt upright in bed and stared at three fish that walked towards him. Free flash or I'll bite you in half, threatened Uncle Pike. Tom darted back under his blanket. Hold your temper, warned, warned Uncle Green, or he won't listen. Dear God, giant frog, cried Aunt Flounder, please free this poor little perch from his prison. Tom peeped out from under his blanket. That's not a prison, it's an aquarium. But he's so homesick he might die, cried Aunt Flounder. Can't you see how sickly he looks? asked Uncle Green. Tom looked across at the jar and saw that Flash really did not look well. Put him back in the lake this instant, demanded Uncle Pike. Well, I need to get dressed first, said Tom. Will you promise to take him back to the lake? asked Aunt Flounder. Of course I will. Good, then we must go quickly before we suffocate, said Uncle Pike. Goodbye and thank you, Tom, said Aunt Flounder, and the fish waddled out of the door. Tom leaped into his trousers, but he was so afraid his fish might die that he didn't finish getting dressed. Never mind about shoes and socks, he thought. <coughs> He took a watering can, carefully put Flash inside, and tiptoed quietly downstairs. And when he reached the shore, he saw the three fish lurching along the pier and diving into the water. As fast as he could, Tom hurried after them and poured Flash back into the lake. 
He lay flat on his stomach and peered down into the water. At first, Flash stayed quite still, and then he gave a little wriggle and quick as a flash, off he swam to greet his aunt and uncles. Their spindly legs had disappeared and they were ordinary fish again. They looked so relieved as they inspected Flash from all sides before disappearing into the lake. The storm watched the fish and imagined how happy they must feel to be back in water. He dropped off to sleep. The little frog hopped over and woke him up. You shouldn't lie there sleeping. You might fall into the water and drown. But the water isn't very deep here, replied Tom. No, but you can also, you can only just stand up in it, said the frog. You should learn to swim. Come on, I'll show you how. And so the frog taught Tom how to swim. Tom practiced and practiced, and suddenly he could do it. Just look at that, said the frog, a real swimmer. Keep your mouth closed and don't worry about getting water in your nose and ears. It's a pity you can't grow webs between your toes like a real frog. When Lottie arrived with Harry the dog to fetch Tom for breakfast, she was surprised to see him swimming. Mother will be glad, she said. She won't have to worry about you playing by the lake anymore. Harry was excited. Woof, woof, he barked. His, swim his swimming like a frog, I'll jump in and teach him to swim properly like a dog. Frog swimming is just as good as dog swimming, said Tom, and soon I'll learn fish swimming. That's the best of all. That Tom isn't so stupid after all, said the big fish, and Flash told them. He's very sensible to try and become like us, they agreed. It really is much better to glide through the water than to stumble along on two legs on dry land.